from the bowling capital of the world, America's number one bowling show. Championship Bowling. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Firestone Bowlerama here in Akron, Ohio, it's Championship Bowling, where each week you see two of the world's greatest professional bowlers in match game competition competing for a purse of over $70,000. This week, a couple of youngsters, Nelson Burton Jr. from St. Louis, Jack Biondo Lillo from down Texas way. What part of Texas are you from, Jack? Houston, Fred. Houston, yeah. Texas. That's still in Texas, isn't it? Oh, it's a small I part. they were going to move that out of there. Uh, fellas, I want to wish you both a lot of luck. $1,000 to the winner, $500 to the loser. Don't forget our bonus system. We'll tell the folks about the World Series of Championship Bowler, Championship Bowling later in the show. Handshake here Good and luck, be ready. Good luck to you. <laughs> Working with us again this week and from Fresno, California, Big Bill Bonetta. Bill? Boy. Oh, Fred, good to be here again. Got a couple of, uh, couple of young fellows here this week. Yes, uh, they're young and they're uh, rising stars. We watch them in a PBA competition, and we notice that these boys have style. They have uh, color uh, beyond the little, of course, puts on a little act, and uh, he knows he's doing it for a reason. Uh, he's a good performer, and uh, Bo uh, Burton uh, is very serious and does a fine job. All right, it should be an interesting match. Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing by for the first game of three on championship bowling here in Akron, Ohio, the home of Firestone. for the first game. Nelson Burton won the toss. He likes to start on the right side. That puts Biondo Lillo. Jack Biondo Lillo from Houston, Texas starts it off. Left side, a little high, leaves the four and the seven. Two youngsters here, Biondo Lillo, born in Texas in 1940. Nelson Burton, Jr., a product of St. Louis, born in St. Louis in 1943. Two fellows in their 20s. Look out, four and the seven, and beyond Lillo almost let one get away from him. Here's Nelson Burton, Jr. They call him Nellie, and his daddy and most of his close friends call him Bo. Nelson Burton, Sr., of course, one of the great stars in the late 30s, early 40s, and a member of the American Bowling Congress Hall of Fame. Very proud of this youngster. And well, he should be. Beautiful ball, Bill. Yes, it is. We've, uh, we've learned to expect that from Bo here. Uh, I noticed that uh, both bowlers are lofting the ball a little bit more uh, than they, when they first start in the practice session. Get the ball uh, to roll a little bit better, a little stronger at the end. Very interesting side light, too, Bill. This is the first championship bowling series that either of the two have competed in, both Burton and Beyond Lillo, introducing their talents. Look at that. Beautiful ball, shades of Dick Weber. Beyond Lillo stands to the extreme left side of the approach. This boy really can crank him way out there. Too high, but look at the result. That's a pretty deep angle there, Fred, but uh, Jack's got uh, a lot of ball, and uh, he hopes that by using that uh, extreme angle, he can get the ball to settle. So at the end of two, Biondo Lillo coming up with a big break here on the right side to give him his strike in the second, now tries for his first double. Burton already has his double in the first two frames. Out it goes, back it comes, and he leaves the 4-7-9. 
on what looked like to be a pretty good hit, just a little tight, Bill. Well, if I had to call that one, I would have called that a strike, Fred. It looks so good. Well, now the action there was, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, that actually the ball picked the five off the nine. Would that be the reason the nine is there? Yes, it is. That ball had a, a lot more finish than it appeared at the beginning. Oops. Just missed the four pin. Going past the four, leaving him open, 38-46 for Biondo Lillo. Threw a strong ball that broke sharply, leaving the 4-7-9. And here's the young fellow who, at his young age, has already mastered the fact that that sharp-breaking ball is just not necessary. Set it in the pocket. Look at that. Beautiful. What a style. Both these bowlers, as all our field of 24, the world's greatest professional stars, wearing the King Louis bowling shirts. You see them on championship bowling every week. Nelson Burton moves left on three. Bonus money coming up. Be careful. Oh, oh did he set that one? Ah, the tremendous difference in Biondo Lillo and Burton. Biondo Lillo. Uh, crossing possibly four, five, six boards going out, five or six coming back. Burton crossing about four boards all the way. There's a deep angle. There it comes. He leaves the five, seven, and that can happen from there. Yes, it can. That's what makes that uh, angle dangerous, Fred. The boys are well aware of this, and, and uh, actually Jack's just taking a chance that uh, by playing that deep, he can trip a few four pins. That's two splits that Beyond Lillo has uh, certainly tried for, just missing the five pin here on the five seven. So he is 54 in the fourth with two splits, one high, one short, both balls actually in the pocket. We're in the fifth, almost halfway in the first game. There it is, and he kicks the 10 out. So Beyond Lillo. With a strike in the fifth, bonus money coming up now as Nelson Burton Jr. from St. Louis for two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, it can't be! It can't be a solid seven. Almost and unbelievable. That's about the first time that, uh, in watching this young fella, that he was really trying for that one, banging his fist on the approach. But I don't think that uh, it was anything serious. Won't lose his composure, I'm sure. Oh, that was a beautiful. Oh, a beautiful shot. Two hundred and fifty dollars. So at the end of five, the under little fifty-four strike, Burton is 109 on a spare. There it is. Solid 10. Well, he's had all six just about as tight as he could get them, Bill. Yes, uh, and speaking of tight, here's a man who has a uh, thumb hole that's so tight, Fred, that uh, he actually has to force his thumb in it, but uh, he tells me it's because uh, it enables him to have a secure grip on the ball without uh, pressing hard. I wouldn't recommend it for uh, too many bowlers. There's the cover. Burton with the 10, 10, and the 6. I can remember many years ago, uh, that was one of the big things that uh, Hank Marino used yes. to do with his two-finger ball. He used to go from the finger hole, put the thumb in the finger hole, and he'd start. If his thumb would swell up, he'd just switch it around to keep it tight. There's a double. Beyond Lillo throwing a beautiful ball from the deep inside here on the right side. On the left side, he's not quite as deep, trying to hold it straighter. In the meantime, Burton playing more to the outside and lining that ball in the pocket. And boy, he has thrown six in that 1-3 pocket, as beautiful as you could possibly do it. Carried the first four and lost the next two. Head out, boy. 
It doesn't get there, and the five pin is up there. Well, in a sense, uh, Jack has been in a one-three pocket uh, every shot, too. Somewhat, uh, of course, if this is also a game of inches, and uh, being off about a quarter of an inch uh, can make a big difference. Beyond the Lillo with his spare in the seventh, 103 spare as Burton moves in in the seventh. Looked at a solid seven pin here on four in a row in the fifth frame. Just a little high, the four pin. Almost the four seven. It's quite obvious he was going to be high there, right? Yes, and he was. missed his mark, I believe. Yeah, he, uh, he pulled that one, which is very unusual for him. Uh, he usually keeps that ball on a direct line. That one, he uh, helped it a little bit. end of seven has a lead of 44 pins. Started with four, left a solid seven, then a solid 10, a little high in the seventh, leaving the four pin. There's an odd leave. Yes, it was. The pins were spilling all over. He was uh, just a little bit late with that ball. The ball came in uh, a little bit more behind the head pin than he wanted to. The eight pin covered by Burton in the eighth frame. It's Biondo Lillo now who did pick up a double. He had two splits, one in the third, one in the fourth, actually pocket splits. The five seven on a thin hit, the four seven nine on a tight hit. He's too high, breaks it up. Well, he was a little bit light, Fred, and uh, again, as we've seen it many, many times in championship bowling, uh, there's a slight tendency to uh, over-adjust again. Outside. Ooh, he just got a piece of that one. <laughs> I wonder if any of you folks fighting the battle of the bulls, or possibly you're on a diet, seem to forget that exercise is important. Why don't you enjoy your exercise by bowling? It's a lot of fun. Many people started bowling for the express purpose of losing weight. Look at that. And then they discovered that bowling was so much fun. So why not shed those pounds and enjoy it? Go bowling. It's great fun. You know why? It's because bowling makes you feel like you'd like to. How do you feel, Bill Benetta? Well, I feel that uh, Jack feels pretty good about that strike. <laughs> All right, here's Burton. Up, another 10 pin. So the young fella has had that ball in the pocket practically all the way. Carried the first four. Now has failed to carry in five consecutive frames. We're in the ninth. Beyond the little, still in here with a big strike in the ninth. Burton looks at the right corner the tin pin. Beautiful putt. So we go into the tenth. Burton out in front. The margin, 44 pins. This fella on the 65 winter tour of the Professional Bowlers Association. Won over $15,000. He averaged 213 per game. Second to Dick Weber, who averaged 214. In 1964, he won the Louisville Open. Shot a 300 game. Four pin in again. And suddenly, Burton has found that strike to be rather difficult to carry. I just wonder, Fred, had he carried that uh, fifth one for bonus money, if this uh, would have happened. We've seen that happen also. Uh, once you stop a string, it's pretty hard to get back on uh, sometimes. Cover in the count for 224. So give the youngster a good start. Both these boys make two appearances. It's total pinfall for the two appearances to qualify the two men 
who will join Dick Weber, the national all-star champion, and Billy Hardwick, the Firestone Tournament of Champions winner in the World Series of Bowling here in Akron, Ohio. The final four weeks of our stay here. There's another solid 10, and Nelson, for some reason, has been unable to carry. After starting with four strikes, he did not carry the remainder of the game. Covered his spares beautifully, shooting at nothing but one pin, one pin spares, the 10, the 8, and the 4, and the 7, and coming out with 223. Beyond a little is high. Right in the middle, wide open, 4, 7, 10. Well, it's quite apparent that uh, right at the explosion point, Fred, he gave it just a little extra, uh, again, because he wanted to keep the ball out to the right and have a good chance to scramble the pins, and he just overdid it. Well, that's three splits that Biondo Lillo has uh, given it everything he can give it, and the total there, 167 for Biondo Lillo, 223 for Nelson Burton Jr. We'll be back for the second game of three here on Championship Bowling in Akron, Ohio. Akron, Ohio, the rubber capital of the world. Nelson Burton, who won the toss, and he liked it to start on the right side. The first and third game will start this game two from the left. Throws it up. He's in and kicks the 10 out. A very interesting uh, situation here in pinfall. Uh, Bill, Bill Bonetta with us here in that uh, he could be starting off just like he did the last game. He carried the first four, did not carry a strike the remainder of the game, and had that ball in the pocket most of the time. And right off the bat, starts out in the first frame, carrying as Biondo Lillo is out there on icy streets and leaves the 2458 the bucket. Speaking of uh, Burton, uh, sometimes starting a new game seems to give you new life, regardless of what happened the game before. Uh, that's the uh, beautiful part about bowling, that uh, if you have a bad day sometime, you can come back in one good game and you feel great. It's great fun. How true. Uh, there's Beyond Lillo's first miss. Actually, he's had three splits to shoot at and missed those, which are excusable. But the 2458 is checked in here by Sam Baca, our statistician, as a miss, an error. We're in the second frame. Nelson Burton Jr. piling up a margin. $1,000 for the winner on the Brooklyn side. Nothing but the seven pin. Seems to be pulling that thing, uh, pulling that ball quite regularly. Yes, that's a very tough line to uh, hold. And uh, I know Jack is a very sharp uh, young bowler, and uh, he's doing it for a reason. He's just not able to execute the shots properly. for Biondo Lillo. Let's see if Nellie Burton Jr., Bo Burton from St. Louis, can catch a double in a hurry here in the second game. He started the first game with four. A solid seven stopped him for bonus money. Still there. There he goes. Boy, you're going to see a lot of this fella in the years to come. I got to, I got to believe that. This fellow started bowling while a student at St. Louis University. Joined the PBA Tour in 1964. His hobby is bridge. Hurry. Look how 10 pin stops him. That ball was a little on the in-between side. Yes, it was. That's the uh, danger zone in bowling. And if you can carry those, especially if you have strikes uh, going, you can pile up a lot of uh, pins. That's Burton's fourth tin pin. He has not had an open and actually has not had a ball too far out of that pocket. He was a little high on the right side, left the 4-7. Seven. The 7 finally fell. Yeah. 
Rondo Leno picks one up in the third. Actually, Burton, uh, every spare shot has been one pin. Right. He shot at anything but one single pin. Of course, that's the uh, benefit of hitting the pocket. Usually, that uh, if you don't strike, uh, you usually get nine pin count. All right. Yondo Lillo now coming back with a double. He caught a double in the first game. Here in the third and fourth, and then followed it with a couple of splits. Had another split in the tenth frame. Burton now trying to get that string started all over again. 29-49. Started with two, left the ten. There we go. What a beautiful exhibition. Beautiful. We're going to have to credit him with a pocket hit there on that four pin, Bill, which was just a little tight. Oh, it was in the pocket, right? There's no doubt about that. Uh, he's uh, maintained a beautiful uh, line. This is the modern way to bowl, Fred. As you've often said, that uh, years ago, years ago, he used to belly the ball out quite a bit. Uh, but today, the way to bowl is with the wood. Look at this. Another mm. ten pin. One pin is all that this youngster shoots at. And every ball has been in the one-three pocket. And I would imagine that uh, Daddy Burton would be very happy watching the youngster here this week on championship bowling. There it is, no doubt about it. So at the end of five for Burton, it's 89 spare. Beyond a little needs this one. But this game just about even. Mm, not there. Brooklyn side. All right. So Beyond a Little gets away with one here in the fifth. We are halfway. Beyond a Little now thinking of bonus money. He has 29 in the second. Strikes going for him in the third, fourth, and fifth. Burton is 89. Spare in the fifth. Sixth frame, second game, big reach, gets it out. Too far, leaves the two, four, five. Man, he seemed to throw that one overhand, Bill. Yes, he did. Uh, the period before, Fred, he was trying to loft the ball intentionally, and then the last three balls, he appeared to reach and roll. And that one, I think he just, again, uh, overextended himself. Had that ball roll a little bit earlier and made the one more half turn, we'll say, toward the pocket. He might have had a chance. Careful. Going away. Now the AMS spare maker indicated between the two and the five, and that's the second spare that Beyond a Little has converted, as we say, going away, going away from the danger area of the chop. Burton now, back in in the sixth, has not had more than one pin to shoot at for a spare. And it'll be the same pin that he has been shooting at here now for some time, and that is his sixth ten pin. And he's just halfway through the match. I'd say this youngster knows where he's throwing the ball, Bill. There's just no doubt about that. He certainly does. And uh, he actually rolls the ball with a lot of authority. He's got everything he's, uh, that he needs to be a true champion. Hurry up. Well, he sure shows a tremendous amount of, uh, of confidence. He doesn't let... Uh, let a tap bother him. His composure's just wonderful. I think he has the temperament to uh, go a long way. And having known his dad for so many years, as you have too, Bill, you've got to believe that this is a chip off the old block. Yeah, no doubt about it. Confidence been instilled in uh, Bo Jr. Look at oh. this. Ten pin number seven. Well, I wonder if... Uh, if the youngster will stay where he is, or uh, do you think he's contemplating some sort of a change, or is he going to just accept these 10 pins as part of the game? I think he's going to accept the 10 pins fed as part of the game. As I like to say, you don't have to like the taps. It's just part of the game, and learn to make that spare. All right. 
Boy, if this fella couldn't make a 10 pin, he'd be in trouble, wouldn't he? So at the end of seven for Burton, it's 127 with a spare in the seventh as Beyond Lillo moves in in the seventh frame and Jack is working on a spare. Should make it, but doesn't quite get there. Two, four, five. Had a good lift on that one, Bill, but I think he just uh, gave it a little too much. Uh, out right, and back. Right. Uh, that's the almost a duplicate shot that he had the uh, last frame. The two, four, five. He's made this one on the left side. Going away. Let's see if he covers. The AMF spill. Oh, he's going left again, and he picked the two off the five. Of course, well, the fear there, Fred, is that uh, you duplicate the first shot. Uh, lead a 2 four, five. sometimes if you just let the shot go the same way, you might skid by. So uh, he took that into consideration, I'm sure. And uh, it's quite a battle when you're not hitting the pocket properly. Jack Biondolillo from Houston, Texas, his second miss of this game. This game was practically even going into the seventh. We're in the eighth now. Here it comes. <laughs> Almost the 7-10, he leaves nothing but the 7-pin. Got a wiggle out of it. From disaster relief activities to blood donations to first aid, your Red Cross is always there. Make a contribution to the Red Cross. Better yet, donate your services to this fine organization. In the eighth, beyond the Lillo and the spare, as Nelson Burton Jr. now trying to take advantage of the open frame of Beyond the Lillows. Why don't we take a look at him in slow motion? Mm. Solid 10. That's his eighth 10 pin. This could be a little disheartening to the average uh, bowler, but uh, I'm wondering how long Nellie can uh, hang on. I noticed him shaking his head a little bit that time. Well, I don't think you should change anything, Fred, except the carry. At the 10, the cover. Beautiful. Eight 10 pins in 18 frames. Almost running 50 percent, Bill. That's right. But uh, where else can you go when you're hitting them that well? well? That was a solid 10. He has had a couple that were could have be classified as half hits, but that was solid. Gotta hurry. Oh, he carries up. <laughs> I don't think he got out of that one the way he wanted to. That was. Uh, Almost a mistake, but it worked beautifully. I don't think uh, he released that ball the same as he had. <laughs> we noticed to our left, uh, Fred Lenning, who was a winner of championship bowling, watching the youngster. Short again, the one-two. Billy Golombieski in the audience from Detroit, the great left-hander, Bill Allen from Orlando, Florida. Tommy Tuttle, the great uh, bear hunter from King, North Carolina. And, of course, Carmen Salvino, the colorful bowler from Chicago. Another winner of championship bowling. You see them all. There's the cover. You'll see them all over the weeks here on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio. Bob Strampy, the former National All-Stars champion with us. You'll see Don Carter, Dick Weber, Harry Smith, Billy Hardwick, Ray Bluth, Andy Marsich, Buzz Fazio, and Bill Bonetta. Thank you, Fred. Georgie Howard, Billy Waylou, Dave Suta. To name a few. Uh, Too high, breaks it up, 4-7. Well, where do you go from here? Jack's been uh, light, high, fast, slow. Uh, he, he lofted the ball, he reached out. Uh, he's going through his uh, repertoire of shots and uh, he's just about exhausted. An interesting situation, Bill, is that uh, beyond a little has yet to leave a 10 pin. The cover in the 10th, the count for 188. So Burton will take 
certainly quite a margin with him into the third and final game, but I'm sure that Bo is thinking of that pinfall, so important. Two appearances, total pins. The two top men will qualify for championship bowling's World Series. Joining Dick Weber and Billy Hardwick. Way out there, missing the head pin, the one, two, four, for 185. No room for bonus money here in the second game. Burton needs two to keep that 220 game going. Opened with 223. He'll settle for the first two. There's a new one, a four pin. He left a four pin early in the, around the middle of the first game. He started the first game with four. That's the first time he's been high since that ball, and that happened right here on the right side. That's the first one he's really uh, jammed, Fred. Perhaps he's trying to get just a little bit deeper in the pocket. Well, in winning the toss, it's quite obvious that the uh, youngster prefers the left side because he picked the right side to start the first and third game. He'll be finishing on his favorite side in the third game. The count here for 206, and this is about the strongest 206 game you'll ever see. Every ball in the pocket. Ooh. Ah, there's the first time that he's been on the thin side, and he kicked him around in great shape. The count for 206, beyond a little. 185. That's the end of the second game. One game to go, $1,000 to the winner. And Bill, let's uh, just review uh, Nelson Burton's performance here so far this week on championship bowling. Well, he's uh, had every ball in the pocket, Freddie, and uh, I noticed that he didn't make any uh, real visible changes in his delivery, even though he left a lot of tempers. Perhaps we could ask him, uh, uh, Nelly, uh, you've been hitting the pocket and not carrying as well as you'd like to uh, carry. Uh, uh, are you contemplating any uh, changes? Well, on that last ball in the tenth frame, uh, Bill, I laid it down at the line instead of lofting it, but uh, I did the same thing the first ball, ran high for the four pin, so I really don't know. Just try to keep hitting the pocket. they got to go sometime, I guess. That seven pin that you left, the solid seven for bonus money, you didn't expect to see that one up there, did no, you? No, I didn't. That's just a bad break, I think, right? Well, we were looking at the ten. When the ten went down, we thought you had it. Uh, Jack, uh... You're giving that thing the inside, outside, bring back, uh, round the looper. Uh, you going to keep doing that, or are you going to try to follow Nellie's line here? Well, I've tried a little bit of everything. I've tried to hook it. I've tried to throw it straight. I've, I don't know what to try now. <laughs> well, you got one game left. Let's come up with something big here for the folks that are watching Championship Bowling from Akron, Ohio, the home of the Professional Bowlers Association. Jack Biondo Lillo from Houston, Texas. They call him Lollipop. Third game, throws it out. Doesn't come back, and here's a new one. The two, the four, and the ten. Well, that's what happens when you're in deep and you overturn a little bit, and that ball uh, skids a little bit further than uh, you'd like it to, and it comes back late. It's either going to be a washout or the 2-4-10, uh, which in a sense is a type of a washout. Beyond a little open in the first frame as Nellie Burton from St. Louis, Missouri. They call him Bo, throwing a three-finger ball, semi-fingertip, very tight thumb hole, as Bill Bonetta mentioned. He has to jam that thumb in there. Still throwing him in the pocket. Look out! That's the first time he's been up too high, and he got a break. <laughs> Nothing but the six pin. So actually, uh, as Bo mentioned, he has made a little adjustment here on the right side. Well, that count ball, he took a chance, which we do uh, occasionally, uh, trying something a little bit different. And uh, he said that he did try to lay it down, and it worked. But uh, whether it works or not, from now on, uh, we'll see. There's a cover, and the youngster is maintaining uh, 
the pace of never shooting at more than one pin on any of his spare shots. He has left eight ten pins in the first two games. Deandre Lillo has not left a ten pin. But he has had four splits. Ten was out of there. That six got a good piece of it that time. Here's Jack Biondo Lillo, left side of the approach. Let's watch him in slow motion. Almost the four nine. He kicked the four out. Well, that's a pattern we, again, we've learned to recognize uh, the bowler is light on one lane, and then he'll go into the other lane, uh, maybe be a little high, and then go back and be light and high and so on. Jack is uh, really frustrated now. Still got a shot for bonus money. That's the spare for beyond the Lillo. So at the end of two, Burton adding to his margin. Burton going in with 429, beyond the Lillo with 352. Well, there is the washout, Bill. This time he missed the head pin and left the 1-2-4-10. In the first frame, he had the 2-4-10. That's, uh, as I said, that's a similar shot. Uh, what he did before, he just barely touched the head pin. Leaving the 2 4 10. This time uh, he left the uh, head pin. The AMS spare maker indicates the ball between the 1 and the 2 pin. Going away down the Brooklyn side and he leaves the 10. Gave it a nice try. He's open again. But all eyes are on Bo Burton, the youngster from St. Louis. In 1964 won $5,000 on the summer tour. On the winter tour in 65, won over $15,000 for the double. There it is. So Burton now moves to the left. You know, for sociable fun, you should try bowling. Bring a friend, bring a date, the entire family. I'll bet you'll enjoy the friendly competition of bowling. It's easy to learn, very enjoyable from the first game. You don't have to score high to really have fun. Great way to stay young and keep fit. It's great fun, because bowling makes you feel like you'd like to. Come on. Oh, boy. And a seven pin. You would have liked to carry that one. Put him in position again for a, a good score plus bonus. That, those pins uh, flew to the left, the right, and the one pin actually jumped up a little bit. He very easily could have had a strike there. Well, the young fella still uh, has gone 24 frames, shooting at nothing but single pins. Has not had a ball too far out of the pocket. In the first frame, he was high on the right side. That would be the only ball that has not been in the pocket. Big lift. There we are. Beyond the Lillo now moving to the left side on a strike in the fourth. Well, I think that was a uh, sort of a desperation shot. Uh, Jack just appeared to rear back a little bit, give it a little extra speed, uh, a lot of lift, and took his chances. There's that big rounder of Yonder Lillo working for a double. He has two opens. He's halfway here in the third and final game of championship bowling. Over $70,000 in prizes. Bo Burton. There's a four pin. Well, this is going to be about the strongest 650. If he can get another strike, to another triple, two more doubles. 
conceivable this young man could be rolling for 800 fed, not uh, 7 or 650, but the whole bundle. There's the spare. It's at the end of five now in the third game. Beyond a little 34 on a double. Burton, 83, 88 rather, and he's on a spare. Third game, still in that pocket. Strike to go on. 4.29 for Burton. 3.52 for Biondo Lillo. Still room for bonus money. Biondo Lillo on two. On three. Leandro Lillo has uh, shown up very well on the tour since 1963. In 63, he won over $21,000, 64, 15,000. On the 65 winter tour, 9,500. Hold that line too high, 610. Well, Jack uh, got a little anxious there. I guess uh, after three in a row, his uh, first uh, string of any kind he was so anxious to get that ball in the pocket, it appeared that uh, he pulled it. Leandro Lillo now with a spare in the seventh. He's 120, 112 spare. Bur Burton on a strike. He has four frames to go. I'm sure that he would like to carry a couple to give him a good total, give him a crack at the World Series. Too high, another four pin. Well, he's carrying the 10 now, Bill, but leaving the four. Well, those are the two uh, bugaboos of bowling for a uh, star. And that is, uh, if he's hitting the pocket, that naturally helps to carry, but if he doesn't, usually he leaves either the four or the 10. He switched around a little bit now. Two solid fours on the right side. A strike here on the left as Burton moves back to his favorite side. has had eight ten pins and five four pins. So every ball but one in the pocket too. Oof. Beyond Lillo now with a strike in the eighth. Still a chance for 222. Burton, a potential 238. And there's room for bonus money for both men. Beyond the Lillo's got to go all the way. He needs this one and three in the tenth. Too high, four pin. Actually, that was one of his uh, better releases, though. He was very smooth at the time. He had the ball rolling right from the foul line. Uh, Jack deserved a little bit better break than he got there. Two spare. Burton will bowl out first, completing his third and final game here on Championship Bowling in Akron, Ohio, at the Firestone Bowlerama. Fred Wolf, along with Bill Bonetta, watching a youngster put on a great exhibition. He has left eight ten pins, five four pins, and two seven pins. Be careful. Too high. And he got away with it. Nothing but the six spin. That's his second ball out of the pocket. But he maintains a fabulous record here of never shooting at more than one pin. Well, you, you asked if he's a good spare shooter. I guess if you make all your spares, you're a good spare shooter. I'd like to shoot at those single pins. 
Well, that's right. Of course, the bowler can make his own uh, problems, and that if he can, if he throws the bad ball as Biondo has, and you're shooting at two four fives or three six tens or two five, these are difficult spares. But when you keep the ball in the pocket as Burton has, never leaving a pocket split, he's had two breaks on the right side, bowling out in the tenth on his favorite side. Too high, and there is a two-pin leave, the first one of the match in the 30th frame. This is a relatively easy spare for Bill. Nice cover. 30 frames. Nelson Burton Jr. has filled them all, has not had an open, has had three balls out of his... 30, 32, 34, figuring his count balls in the 10th. And he's had two balls a little high. There would be two balls on the right, actually three balls high. There it is. So he only missed the pocket on 23, the left side once. He missed the pocket twice on the right side, leaving eight 10 pins, five four pins, two seven pins, and a 4-7. On the nose for Biondo Lillo, leaving nothing but the 7. The cover and count, 191. So Biondo Lillo will be about 540. Burton with 206. 635. up a little bit here. It'll be on the little 191, his total 543 for Burton, 635. We'll be back for the presentations. Have a word or two with these two fine young professional bowlers here in Akron, Ohio on championship bowling. Akron, where the World Series of Golf is played annually. Here are the final results for Jack Biondolillo, 167, 185, 191. His total is 543. For Nelson Burton, Jr., 223, 206, 206. The total, 635. Did you enjoy this one, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Jack, $500 for the runner-up. And uh, I was looking at a very interesting statistic in that uh, you had 12 strikes and Nellie only had 14. Well, that's right, Fred. It seems sort of funny. Nelly bowled so good to me, he should have had at least 700. I really enjoyed watching him. Well, he had eight, uh, let's see, he had eight ten pins. He had five seven pins. He had, I believe, only three balls out of the pocket, just a little high. And we were trying to keep that nine pinner going there till the tenth frame when he left two. Now, when you get inside, as deep as you were playing, in relation to Nelly's uh, more outside uh, well, you never moved to the outside, really. Your your type of ball would keep you inside, wouldn't it? Well, actually, Fred, I like to play around 11th to 12th board normally. This angle I was trying today, I really don't like, but I was trying to use it because I thought it would be the most effective angle for my ball, but I just didn't have the timing to go with it. The timing is very important. Nellie, you were throwing that ball in the pocket, uh, certainly with regularity, and uh, Bill Bonetta was mentioning that he didn't think you'd, uh, you'd make a change, that you would just accept the ten pins as they came. Is that about the way you played it? Well, Freddie, uh, I was using too much speed, I think, but I needed that to hit the pocket. Uh, if I had slowed down, I think I'd have started missing the pocket, so I just had to accept the ten pins when I got them. Well, you mentioned before we started the third game that uh, in your count ball in the tenth, frame of the second game, you moved a little here on the left side, which is your tough side. Right side is your tough side, right? Right. Of the two. Did you try to make that change throughout the third game? Well, I tried to roll the ball instead of loft it so far out in the alley on 24, but uh, it kept rolling high on me and kept leaving fours. Well, that, that was the interesting thing I was coming to, because at the start of the match, you were leaving tens, and if you made a change, you were leaving the fours. Uh, you have days like that. Days like that. $1,000 ought to make you feel... Uh, 
A little better, Nelly. Let's hope we'll see you back here in the World Series. All right, thank you. Good Fred. luck to you, Nelly Burton, and to you, Jack Biondolillo. Ladies thank and gentlemen, you, two of our great young <laughs> professional stars. <laughs> Repeating the total, Biondolillo, 543, Burton, 635. Sure hope you can join us again next week here at the Firestone Bowlerama in Akron, Ohio, when we'll have two more bowling's top professional stars in a three-game match competing for a prize fund of $70,000. So speaking for Bill Bonetta and myself, this is Fred Wolf. Just keep them bowling out there. It's great fun. And you know why? It's because bowling makes you feel like you'd like to. Championship Bowling by King Louie. by the American Bowling Congress, and we wish to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us produce championship bowling.